You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Super excited to be hanging out with you all. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Really appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. As always, we've got a very interesting question today regarding the Mavic 3 versus Mavic 3 Enterprise. I had a feeling this was coming up. So here we go. Let's go ahead and hear that question brought to you by Drone use in-person training courses. We're going to be focusing a lot on having trainings out here in Colorado. We've got 1,200 beautiful acres to go fly around. And there's no better place to take flight. Frankly, you're going to love it. You're going to love the lakes. You're going to love the pastures. You're going to love the mountains. You're going to love the views. You're going to love the people. You're going to love the experience. So whether you join us for the upcoming flight mastery classes or the new and improved mapping classes, or maybe you have decided that you're ready for a drone retreat and you're going to join us for the Drone You Experience training. Seven days of a gamified experience that merges training and real world experience all in one. Wherever you are going to join us, we're excited to see you to give you the confidence that we believe you really won't gain anywhere else. Drone You teaches from experience. With our systems, we can ensure that you do gain the confidence to be able to deliver at a level that simply your competitors may not be able to keep up with. I hope you decide to join us for a Drone You in person training here in lovely. Colorado. Check them out, thedroneu.com. Go down to our events and check them out. Hey guys, this is John from San Diego, California. I have the Mavic 3 Enterprise, and this is a follow up to the video that you guys did regarding the DJI not allowing third party apps on the RC Pro controller. The controller that comes with this uh, drone, as you well know, is uh, the RC Pro Enterprise, and it does allow third party apps. So, my question is, the Mavic 3 Enterprise is basically capable of doing exactly the same things in a cinematography way as the Mavic 3 does, but none of that is available in the Pilot 2.0 app. Is there a way to be able to install the Fly app or another app in order to enable all of those features like Active Track and Hyperlapse on the drone? Thank you, guys. Thank you, John. I really appreciate the question. And I would imagine there's a lot of folks that are wondering the same thing. So let's see. uh, Do we have any information that might be helpful or are they just kind of out of luck? Well. Or both. um, I I, I think right now you're kind of out of luck. Um, And I say that because DJI, as we had mentioned in previous episodes of the podcast, has very specifically said they're going to enable... SDK and PSDK for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but they are not going to do it uh, for the Mavic 3. So right now on the RC Pro remote, you can get Drone Deploy, you can get Drone Link, uh, you can get Litchi even now. Um, but he has the Enterprise. And that's on the Enterprise. And and I don't know this for sure, and I should honestly try it with our bird, but I think if you have the Mavic 3 Enterprise remote, you might be able to bind that to the Mavic 3 drone, but it makes you wonder, well, can you actually use the video features out of it? I think this is why so many people are going to older drones because you get the the video features, the 4K60 out of these older drones, and you also get the autonomous missions. And DJI has segregated this and said, no, 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 if you want mapping missions, Mavic 3 Enterprise, if you want video, you're going to want the Mavic 3. And so it's really annoying. I even looked at drone hacks. I looked at a couple apps this morning and I am not seeing anything that is showcasing that we're going to have those video features. DJI, if you're listening, uh, if we pay a lot more money for a Mavic 3 Enterprise, why not have the same video features? Uh, Because 4K30 is not cutting it for most of us. So that said, when it comes to the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Enterprise, maybe this explains, Rob, why the Mavic 2 Pro is uh, going up in price. Yeah, I don't know. Um, So basically what he's asking relative to the Mavic 3 Enterprise, you're saying that the Mavic 2 Pro can do all that just fine? Like, is that? Well, the Mavic 2 Pro can't shoot 60 frames unless you go down to 2K. 
um, 2K on the video feed. So, but with the Phantom 4 Pro, you could shoot 4K 60 and do mapping as well. So I know a lot of people mm. have even said Mavic 3 Cinna, most capable drone to date, yet the price has gone down in half because it seems like a lot of people may not agree with that. That was over a year ago. True. And that was, yeah, I think obviously based on what's happened with pricing on that, that's not the case anymore. Yeah, a hundred percent. In all honesty, I hope Drone Hacks comes out with something. Drone Hacks has um, stuff for the Mavic Three, but you can only use the Android app um, for that particular firmware. Mm. Um, now I wonder if the Android app. No, doesn't even let you do that. It says uh, with the Android app, you'll get FCC power levels supported and you can remove the 15 meter height limit imposed on certain Indian drones. Hmm. Seems like they're definitely locking down these drones more and more and more. And getting better at it, uh, meaning making it more difficult to hack. Yes, sure does seem that way. In all honesty, oh, I'm not really sure that there's any good news to deliver on this particular one. You could fly the Inspire too if you can still get your hands on one of those. So there, there's an alternative for you. We'll also fly a lot more fun and more naturally than the Mavic 3 as well. I will say one thing I've noticed, flying the Mavic 3 versus flying the Mavic 3 Enterprise. The 3 Enterprise is like flying a completely different drone with the attitude mode, with the sport mode. Um, I've got my banking turn uh, parameter turned off. It's just a lot a lot more fun to fly than the Mavic 3. So, so he's in good shape since he has the Enterprise. I think so. Yeah, I mean, again, the lack of video features really sucks. And then it's like, well, we should be able to use an app to essentially pull video down from that thing. The only other workaround that I could possibly figure out is if you were to actually plug in the Mavic 3 Enterprise remote, take the HDMI from that remote, and you were to plug it into... Um, one of those monitors, uh, like a small HD monitor, hmm. and then record the frame rate that you want from that. Because if I understand it, the transmission from the Mavic 3 is a 60 frame uh, VTX transmission when you're at or you're set to the high um, quality transmission. I wonder if we could do it that way. But that would be an awful lot of money to spend just to be able to shoot at a better frame rate. So, How much money are we talking? Probably a thousand to two thousand more. Oh wow! So yeah, that is a lot of money. Or the Atmos controller—that's probably the one I would want to use. So yeah, man, it's really a bummer. Well, it goes to show another example of if you have to spend eight or nine thousand dollars to have two Mavics to do good video and mapping. Why not just buy one of the bigger drones at that point? Why not just get the Sony Airpeak? Why not just get a Free Fly Astro? Why not just get a, a drone that can fly the camera that you use on the ground? I mean, you, you think about flying a Sony A1 camera and you're going to get that high frame rate. You're going to get that SNQ mode. You're going to get gorgeous 4K video. You can even shoot 8K video. And I mean real 8K video, not like that super sampled stuff out of Autel's small drones. So that said, if you really want that camera flexibility, you might, you know, DJI is making the decision really easy for everyone, uh, unfortunately. So, hmm. Well, yeah, I guess it's just a shame for those folks that already have a drone like the Mavic 3 Enterprise and want to do the things that John's doing. I suppose be patient or uh, put down some more cash. Yikes. Kind of where he's at. Yeah, I unfortunately do. But, I hope I had better news for you. Yeah, check back. Maybe, you know, these things change all the time. Yeah. Um, keep an eye on that, dronehacks.com. Right? Well, and you know what? This brings up an important point. We know the Inspire 3 is coming. I wonder if DJI merges all these features into one Inspire 3. Which then begs the question, what's that going to cost? Because yeah. if they're doing that, then I would guess that's going to be a big old bump up in price. That's very different from what we've been used to even with the Inspire series. Seems like the argument for domestic drones is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you we still have the um, M30T that we love, right? I do love flying that drone. It is so, a lot. But it only shoots wacky short frame rates as well. Yeah, but so it's not I, a video drone. No, it... Man, though, as far as action sports are concerned, like what I love about the Ma or the M30T, and this is a big difference between the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the M30T. On the Mavic 3 Enterprise, you're only recording the video feed that you see on your screen. So if you're shooting on wide, that's all you're recording. If you click zoom, 
now you're recording the zoom camera. On the M30T, it records both simultaneously, and it doesn't matter which one you're looking at. Uh, when we were doing some air-to-air B-roll, I love that feature because even if I'm super wide getting a nice lens flare as I'm doing an orbit, but I've also got that super zoomed in shot, well, now I can select from the zoom feed or the wide feed to select my shot in post. And that is a really awesome feature to have, especially in the action sports world. Well, and, and yeah, for sure. And on the T side, could you throw the thermal camera into that equation? And the FPV camera. So if wait, you, wait, but it can only record two at a time? No, it can record four at a time. Holy shimoli. <laughs> yeah. So it can record the FPV feed if you want that like plane like look, or it can record the wide camera, the zoom camera, and the thermal camera all at once. Wow. Those are some big files. But on top of that, if you don't need the thermal, you don't have to spend the 14 grand. It takes it all the way down to like 10, right? On the M30. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that. Is that right? Um, uh, I think so. I was right once before. I think it was back in 1997. Oh, hush. Okay. Um, no, it was 98. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. So M30. M- you are right. Look at that. <gasps> Love it, Rob. This Everybody, is awesome. Take a screenshot. Hey, no, the, you might, <laughs> you're on to something, dude, like for sure. Yeah, honestly, the thermal camera on the M30T isn't that good anyway. Um, one thing I heard uh, in a meeting, let's just call it a meeting, was uh, a lot of people are bummed by the lack of capability of some of these thermal sensors from DJI um, and just how hard it is to... Um, actually take those images and convert them to be able to work in a program like FLIR Tools. And I'm trying to remember because I learned about this resource from someone I met last week. Now I'm going to try to find his badge. But that being said, if I understand correctly, the M30T is really about public safety applications, right? For the most part. For the most part, Do that they, is correct. In terms of the thermal applications for them, isn't it more of a kind of a live feed application? That is also correct, yes. And um, so kind of what you're alluding to, looking into, isn't terribly important for most of what the drone was designed for. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's a, I think that's a, a totally fair assumption. I shouldn't say fair. I hate that word. It's a reasonable assumption. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to try to pull this up before we go, because this is actually a huge hack and a really good resource for people. And our internet's not working very well right now, which is really unfortunate. Um, But Eric, I met Eric Olson this weekend, and he's with Aerial Thermal Imaging. Um, And yep, here it is. Industry Leading Thermal Imaging. And if you go to Tools... On their website, they have a free converter. Here it is. Yes. DJI radiometric image converter. And you convert any thermal imaging um, into a radiometric image or an image that can be read by FLIR tools. They wrote this program. Wow. And yeah, look, M3T, et cetera, H20T. So this works with those files. If you really want to save yourself a heap, a lot of money when it comes to thermal imaging and converting those images into usable uh, database decision-making tools, you've got to check out aerialthermalimaging.com forward slash tools where you can get a free thermal converter. I think that's going to be really powerful. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's t- very, very, very cool because paying for FLIR business tools, don't want to do it. So Indeed. Well, anyway. um, yeah, if you, especially if you don't use it a lot. Yeah. Cool. All by, right. By the way, check out Aerial Thermal Imaging for a lot of different stuff. They, uh, These guys are wicked, wicked smart. So uh, really impressed with them. Hmm. Very nice guys too. So Awesome. Yeah, check them out. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Look, they have solar inspection reporting and analytics as well. We might need to do a little more. Yeah. Partnering with I these have to folks. call Eric and say, what's good, dude? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it uh, for us today. Um, before we go, I do have a bombshell. We have a new name for Rob. Contrador de Friole. Bean counter. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Contrador de Friole. <laughs> this is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.